back in history to just after the Second World War, okay, 1947, there were two teams of engineers working on a really important project. One of these teams was in the UK and the other team was over in the United States. And what they were trying to do is they were developing an aircraft that could fly faster than the speed of sound. Now this had never been done before. So up went these test pilots to fly these aeroplanes and as the aeroplane started to build up speed and get close to the speed of sound, this thing called Mach Tuck would happen where the aeroplane would start to do this. So the pilots panicked and they pulled back on the stick to try and bring the aircraft back up into the air and the aircraft's wings broke and the aircraft crashed and the pilot died. This happened over in England, this happened over in the United States and it kept happening over and over again. So the United States uh, test pilot uh, facility up at Edwards Air Force Base in, in, in uh, California, they approached a young man called Chuck Yeager, who you can see in the photograph, and they said, Chuck, uh, we know that a lot of your colleagues have died in that, but would you mind going up and testing uh, this X-1 aircraft? And they said, how much money would you like? And he said, well, I'm already uh, an employee of the United States Air Force, so I'm already being paid, so I'll do it. So Chuck figured out that he needed to do, do something different. Simply because, up until now, the pilots had been going up, flying this aircraft according to a conventional piloting technique to try and achieve an unconventional result. So as Chuck went up, his plane launched, the speed started to build up, and as the speed built up, Mach Tuck happened again. The aircraft started to do this. So what Chuck said to himself, he said, well, if all my colleagues did that and crashed and burned, I'm going to do this. And as a result, he became the first man to go past the sound barrier. Chuck Yeager, he's famous, he's still living today. He's a pioneer of aviation. Uh, I grew up reading about him and, and, and dreaming about this, this incredible aviator as I took to the skies at 17 years old and earned my wings before I even earned my driver's license. And just to let you know, I actually failed my driver's test the first time round. <laughs> anyway, that's, a, that's, that's another story. So, the reason why I tell you this story is because Chuck Yeager is not the first person in history to do something unconventional to achieve an unconventional result.